dear sisters and brothers in christ as in the last three sundays we continue to hear from the sermon on the mount of matthew's gospel today it's matthew chapter 5 verses 38 to 48 the whole text deals with the way we should deal with our enemies it can be divided into three parts part 1 verses 38 to 42 is about overcoming evil with goodness the second part verses 43 and 44 is an exhortation to love the enemy and the third part verses 45 to 48 gives a reason for advocating such a type of behavior now in the first part jesus instruction is about dealing with the evil doer he says you have heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth this law an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth of the old testament for example there in exodus 2124 is a law of the tribunal even today this is the principle with which our courts function it means that the punishment should not be more than the evil inflicted there shall not be any excess in the punishment meted out to an evil doer even this law is something bad mahatma gandhi said if it were an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth none of us would have eyes or teeth therefore jesus exhorts positively going beyond this law of retaliation the so called lex talionis in latin jesus advises but i say to you do not resist an evil doer it means that the recipient of the evil action should not lower himself to the level of the evil doer the heart should be free of all kinds of wickedness and feelings of retaliation evil should not be met with evil this is what st paul interpretatively advised the thessalonians see that none of you repays evil for evil but always seek to do good to one another and to all first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 15 now basing on this fundamental law jesus brings forth four examples from ordinary life and exhorts so he says but if anyone strikes you on the right cheek turn the other also striking on the right cheek is a grave act of violence but even in this case there should not be the urge for retaliation it does not mean that one should need a protest at such terrible violence nor denounce it we may remember here that during the trial of jesus a soldier had struck him on the cheek and jesus had protested we can recall it from john chapter 18 verse 22 but even there the thought of retaliation was not seen thus jesus has set an example about this st peter says in his first letter thus when he was abused he did not return abuse when he suffered he did not threaten but he entrusted himself to the one who judges rightly this is 1 peter chapter 2 verse 23 in a second case jesus says if anyone wants to sue you and take your court give you a cloak as well in a litigation it was allowed to take both the coat and the cloak what is advised is that both should be given back that is the coat and the overcoat for a poor man the coat was for covering his nakedness and the overcoat was for covering himself at night for sleeping as protection from cold in this way there shall not be any type of retaliation but generosity practiced the third case which jesus says concerns 
one's behavior towards soldiers jesus says if anyone forces you to go one mile go also the second mile at that time in palestine there were soldiers the occupying forces as palestine was under the romans the roman soldiers then would ask the people on the road to help them carry their heavy luggage with which they traveled or walked if someone were asked to carry some luggage for one mile that person should be ready to carry it for another mile and that without complaint and without the thought of vengeance or revenge the fourth or the last case relates to giving alms and loans Jesus says give to everyone who begs from you and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you in fact this suggestion requires no interpretation what is expected is large heartedness or generosity one should hear the cries of people in agony and help them one should participate in the sorrows of others one should be able to respond to the needs of others one needs to have a sympathetic heart and listening ears now as said above the second part that is verses 43 and 44 is an exhortation to love the enemy jesus says you have heard that it was said you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy but i say to you love your enemies pray for those who persecute you In fact in the old testament it's not said directly that one should hate the enemy at the same time it's not said that hating the enemy is not right there is also the prayer that the enemy be punished and destroyed as we see it in psalm number 109 verses 6 to 20 jesus goes beyond all this and gives a new lesson love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you the advice to pray for the enemy goes against the prayer for vindication and vengeance heard in the old testament one should not pray to god to punish the evil doer the reason for such an advice is on account of the fact that the fundamental character of a disciple of christ is that of love alone love promotes and wishes only goodness love cannot act wickedly this love is for everyone not limited to any group or person it cannot be based on the way in which the other people act even when the other person acts incorrectly love cannot act in the same manner the final part or the third part of this instruction verses 45 to 48 formulates the reason for advocating such a type of behavior jesus says so that you may be the children of your father in heaven for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous for if you love those who love you what reward do you have do not even the tax collectors do the same and if you greet only your brothers and sisters what more are you doing than others do not even the gentiles do the same be perfect therefore as your heavenly father is perfect now what is implied is that god himself is the model for love john in his first letter makes a beautiful definition of god god is love this is 1 john chapter 4 verses 8 and 16 here in our text The last statement is quite significant. Be perfect therefore as your heavenly father is perfect. What is the nature of the perfection of God? It means that God does only what is virtuous. All men and women should do likewise. This advice also places a challenge before us all. How can we be perfect like God? It's impossible. Therefore It means that becoming perfect like God is a lifelong project or process. It's not over till the last breath of our life. 
this process continues till the very end of our life dear friends the challenge that jesus places before us with these pieces of advice is very strong in fact we cannot do it all without the grace of god at our good will and effort will surely be accompanied by the grace of god amen